Thank you for watching this DPL9 tutorial video series. This is the second in a series of videos that will show you how to build a decision analysis model in the decision tree focus modeling mode in DPL9. In this video, I will continue to add events to the decision tree. The demand uncertainties will be dealt with next, and there are two, one for the developed market and one for the emerging market. ACME has decided to conduct a market study to gain some information on the level of demand we might achieve in both markets prior to making the capacity decision. So I'll create a new discrete chance node and we'll place it just before the capacity decision. Notice when I hover over the capacity node, the cursor changes to a reorder cursor, indicating that the new node will be placed just before it. I'll name the node to be market test results and the outcomes to be poor, decent, and outstanding. I'll leave the default probabilities of 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.3 and will not add any values. This node will simply condition the demand events I'm about to add. First I'll add the node for the developed market demand which I'll place just after the capacity decision. On the general tab I'm going to name the node demand developed and we'll decrease the number of outcomes for the node to 2, low and high. I'll specify the low outcome as the default. I'm also going to check the box labeled separate probability and value data input trees. This will split the node's data input tree into two, one for values and the other for probabilities. I did this because the probabilities for the node are going to be conditioned by the market test result node, but the values will not. This will cut down on redundancy. On the values tab, I'll enter a 1.0 for the low and a 2.0 for the high. Note that these are the actual values for the demand event in thousands of widgets and not flag values. On the Probabilities tab, I'm going to first define the conditioning by clicking the Conditioning button and selecting Market Test Results from the dialog. Now I have six probability input slots, a low and a high, for each of the three outcomes of the market test result. I'll enter the probabilities as follows. I'll follow the same steps for the demand emerging uncertainty, the only difference being the values for the low and the high, which in this case are 0.75 and 1.25 respectively. Next up is the COGS uncertainty. This value will be modeled as a percentage of sales. I'll leave the default probabilities and will enter values of 0 0.08, 0 0.1, and 0.14 for the low, nominal, and high outcomes respectively. Next is CAPEX. I'll leave the default outcomes and probabilities, but will enter flag values of 1, 2, and 3 for the values respectively. CAPEX depends both on the production expansion location, building new costs more than expanding, and the level of capacity built bigger capacity equals higher capex. So I've set up some tables within the spreadsheet to look up the value of capex given the production expansion and capacity level. I'm going to employ the link events command again to link these newly added events to the appropriate named ranges in the spreadsheet. I'll also move the get pay expression to the branches of the last node in the tree with a cut and paste. Now I'm ready to run the model in order to see what the optimal decision strategy is. I'll make sure risk profile, initial decision alternatives, and policy tree outputs are all selected within the home run group. Then I'll click the decision analysis button to run the model and produce the outputs. The policy tree is activated and clearly indicates that the optimal expansion strategy for ACME is to expand the current facility within the developed market. The optimal capacity strategy is either to build medium or large depending on the outcome of the market test. If I look at the initial decision alternatives chart, which compares the risk profiles of the two expansion options, I can see that the entire expand and develop probability curve is to the right of the build new. This is the conclusion of the second video. I would encourage you to request a free 21-day trial license of DPL9 Professional from our website if you'd like to build this model along with me. There is a link to download the spreadsheet containing the financial calculations for the model both within the video description and on our website. In the next and final video, I will introduce asymmetry to the model and will incorporate the two remaining events that impact the expand and develop alternative. Lastly, I will run an analysis to see how the optimal decision strategy changes.